The king of Hydra Clash, Corpulent and Cadaver, has finally been defeated. He is no longer the number one team in Hydra Clash. We have finally got that nerf. So naturally, with one sort of as as one thing falls, another thing rises. Players are looking to find the next big team, and they have basically settled on two particular champions. One of them is a relatively new discovery, but the one the other one is not that new. It's quite common. Both of them are dwarves. And the first one is naturally Trunder Guilt Mallet. People have been using this team in Hydra for many, many years at this point. I think about two years since Hydra has been out. They utilize in the Cloak of Ages to deal extreme amounts of damage when decapitated heads are happening. And we see a similar effect now with the new rare. If you haven't seen Nubraid's video, if you haven't seen Scratch's video, they've done some videos actually doing teams and play tests in this. Uh, on Madman, Madman's A1 has a Trunder-like ability where it's a 50% chance of inflicting damage with the second hit to all other enemies. So it's less consistent, but it is on an A1. So I, I didn't really want to repeat the videos that all the other content creators have done. I'm not going to make a Madman video today. What I'm going to be doing in this video is giving you the clarification to how this damage actually works in Hydra and why... I have argued for about three years now that they need to have actually fixed these kind of effects where you do excessive damage. This isn't something that I'm all of a sudden saying, oh, now that we've defeated the cadaver, we have to go nerf the next thing. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm trying to do in this video is explain to you how the damage is being calculated. And once you realize how it's being calculated, pretty much everyone's reaction should be, that's a little bit stupid. Perhaps they should fix that. I've been long arguing that Trunders A2 is coded incorrectly, probably for about three years. If you go back through my videos, you'll see that I've mentioned it multiple, multiple times. So I don't want to make this video about nerfing the champions. I want to educate people to understand how it's working because a lot of people have come to me going, I don't understand how is Madman doing so much damage? How is Trunder doing so much damage? It doesn't make any sense to me. So I'm going to give you in this video exactly how these abilities work. So let's have a look at the Trunder ability first. So Cloak of Ages, it attacks one enemy. Then attacks all other enemy with the second hit, dealing 60% of the damage inflicted from the first hit. So the first hit that you're going to do is based on this skill's multiplier. The second attack you're going to do is going to be based off the quality of the first hit. So the harder that you hit on the first hit, the more damage you're going to feed into the second hit. And similarly with Madman, it does kind of a similar effect. It's just not as efficient. We're going to be attacking one enemy. It has a 50% chance of attacking all other enemies. So it just rolls the dice. One out of two chances. Dealing 30% of the damage inflicted. So we get half the amount of the initial damage. And we also get half the chance. So that's the trade-off for having it on an A1. So how is it actually working? And why are people utilizing it in Hydra? So the key thing you've got to know about Hydra is multipliers are important because what is essentially happening here is whenever you use this attack the key thing that is important to note is the secondary hit is not based off the skill multiplier it's based off the damage produced by the first attack so it's based off a fixed arbitrary number not a multiplier based on the attack that's the first thing to remember the second thing to remember is because these are two independent attacks and because the first the second attack is based off the damage of the first attack you're getting twice the amount of multiplication effects because essentially what is happening is I'm attacking one enemy. I'll run the multipliers through. I'll apply my crit damage. I'll apply my book masteries. I'll apply all the different things to that first attack. All of that gets combined into one final damage number. We'll show the numbers on the spreadsheet in a moment. But all of that gets combined into a single damage. So imagine you do 100,000 with that first attack. So what happens then is we go, well, we've attacked the one time. We need 60% of that 100,000. So our secondary damage base value, our raw value, is 60,000. But what then ends up happening, because this secondary hit is not fixed damage, it's just like a normal attack, it gets pushed through the multipliers again. So instead of us now going, you know, attack times a multiplier, we're taking 60,000, which has already been multiplied once, and we're going to then put that 60,000 and multiply it by the books again, multiply it by the masteries, multiply it by weaken, crit damage, decapitation effects. And that is the function that failed. That, that's what causes so much damage is essentially the second hit is getting twice the amount of multiplies. It's getting twice the amount of the benefits. 
Now it does matter in terms of the first attack. It's not like that first attack is irrelevant because the base damage that you're multiplying needs to be high. So the, the harder hitting the first attack, the more you'll multiply the second attack because you're giving it more raw damage. Let's run this through a spreadsheet so you can visualize it in a better way with numbers on a screen. So I've set up a, a sheet for Trunder and a sheet for Madman that we can run some numbers at here. So down the left hand side, I've established so the, the parameters for our damage and ability. So I've given Trunder 6,000 attack, 250% crit damage, and right now I've given her 25% ignore defense. Now these numbers are quite, in my opinion, for a lot of high-end players, conservative. I've seen 8,000 attack trunders, 300% crit damage trunders. You're probably running area bonuses, which could be 20% plus savage cruel, which is 30%, so 50%, rather than just this 25%. Her A2 skill multiplier is six times. So the first attack is six times, and she gets 20% of damage from the books. The books gives her 20% bonus damage. Then I've given her masteries for Heart of Glory, single out and bring it down. Heart of Glory is 5% uh, damage when at full health. Single out is when an enemy is below 40% HP, it gets 8% damage. And then bring it down is when you've got a, an enemy that's got a higher max HP than you. So all of those effects add. Now keep in mind, these are not additive together. These are all multiplicative bonuses. So it'll be 1.05 times 1.08 times 1.06. They're all separate multipliers. Then we've got Weaken. And then here you can see I've put a decapitation bonus for the first attack and a decapitation bonus for the second attack. It's very important. You'll see when I start messing with the numbers. So if we're, if we're just going to have a look at the mischief head that is on difficulty normal. So that has a defense value of 1464. And I've got four damage reduction percentages here. I've got it as if you have no decreased defense and no ignore defense. So this is hitting a head with just standard. I've got it if you've just got the debuff. I've got it if you've just got the ignore defense. And then I've got it if you're using both the debuff and this ignore defense component combined. So basically a full efficient build. As I mentioned, what happens? Well, we basically work out first the damage reduction equation. So this, this mischief head will reduce 53% of its incoming damage. So our first hit is basically 6,000 times 1.5, because that's going to give us the attack buff on that hero. So we're boosting the attack by 50%. Then we multiply it by our skill multiplier, which is six. Then we're going to multiply it by books, which is 20%. And then we're going to multiply each individual mastery, 5%, 8%, and 6%. Then we're going to multiply it by weaken. So we're going to add weaken to the target. That's 25%. And then we're going to multiply it here by the first decapitation bonus. So this is assuming we are hitting a decapitated head with the A2 first. And then we're adding 250% crit damage bonus. And then we multiply it by this damage reduction to bring it down to the final number. So we end up with a single hit for the first hit of 480,000 when there is no debuff on the target. If there was a debuff, it would go up to 741,000. If we just used our 25% ignore defense, it would be 571,000 and it would be 801,000 if we're combined. Now, that's the first set of multipliers. For the second attack, we need to take 60% of this. Let's go with the 800,000, right? 60% of the 800,000. That means our raw damage is going to be 481,000. So we're not gonna go 6,000 times 1.5 times six as a multiplier. We're now gonna multiply everything we just multiplied by 481,000. And that is where the scaling is coming from. Because it's 481,000, we're now basically going 481,000 times 1.2 times 1.05 times 1.08 times 1.06 times 1.25 times what times three for the decapitation times 3.5 for the critical damage. And then it goes through the damage reduction again. Now, obviously, this AoE hit won't hit the mischief head. So this number is not exact it would be dependent on the other heads and whether the other heads have decreased defense and all those sorts of things but if you imagine a world where you had five or uh, four mischief heads you would be dealing seven million damage because you're remultiplying everything this is the issue with this ability this is why i have said for years that trenders a2 was broken because if this first hit was so strong you're essentially getting 500 percent crit damage on your second hit you're essentially getting 50 percent weaken on your second hit you're essentially getting 40% damage books. In the instance of Hydra, you're getting 400% more decapitation bonus on this secondary hit. You're double multiplying. That's the flaw. Really, these spread attacks, these attacks that do 
damage based on excessive damage. So this is like, for example, with Baron, where once he kills someone, any surplus damage is then spread to all other enemies. I think uh, Belenor, uh, not Belenor, I think um, Dracomorph has this effect as well. Or effects that basically deal AoE damage based on its first hit. They really should be fixed. They shouldn't be remultiplied because you've already given it your crit damage multiplier. You've already given it the book bonus, the decapitation bonus. Let's just show you how this actually matters. Watch if we, so if we basically said we're attacking a head without decapitation first. So we would be draining 200% bonus damage from the first hit. Look at the difference in damage output. The difference is still the same. Essentially, we're gaining 791% bonus damage on the AoE, right? So this is the effect of multiplying twice. We gain, the, the difference between the first hit and the AoE is 791% stronger. But because the first hit now is actually only 267,000 because we didn't hit a decapitation bonus, the secondary hits are weaker. Whereas if you apply that in inverse, you get the same effect. So the decapitation bonus is where it's really scaling. You're getting double the benefits. You can see the, the difference is not changing. Even if we hit both heads, that's when the, the multipliers are different, when we have no decapitation bonus. Now, if we want to push this to the extreme, you can go, okay, well, what happens if I put Savage Cruel plus area bonuses? That would be 50% ignore defense. Well, now we're up to 865%. If we push to 300% crit damage, now we're at 1,000%. If we push 8,000, we're at, still at 1,000. The attack really wouldn't matter. The attack's not going to make a difference, right? Crit damage will because you're going to get double the bonus. Some champions in the game also have a passive which is multiplicative on their crit damage, right? They'll increase their crit damage multiplicatively, as in they gain 25% more crit damage. Not 25% additive, but they multiply their crit damage by 25%, which means those hero, those champions' effects benefit more from crit damage. And this is a similar situation here. Because we're remultiplying it, we're doubling, we're multiplying twice, any bonus you can give to your multiplication effects will be more efficient than just giving more attack. That is on normal. Now, if we push this up to, say, Nightmare, you can see that the percentages do go down a little bit because essentially there's more defense for you to ignore. That's when having like 70% ignore defense would be more beneficial, right? If you can ignore more defense. But you're still seeing a massive increase. Why? Because we're multiplying everything twice. That is the major issue. Now let's just compare it to Madman just for the sake of this video. Um, we can see that, you know, Trunder's able to hit probably on Nightmare with a, let's just put it back to a conservative build. And let's maybe say you've got Savage Cruel and maybe you've got half your area bonuses, right? So you're at 40%, right? Let's just assume you're hitting both decapitation bonuses with weaken and you've got the standard masteries you're probably looking at a 646 into a 4.6 it's important that the first hit you target is the squishiest target that the one with the lowest defense because we want to try and increase the first hit as much as we can so we can have a higher raw damage to multiply again if that's how you're if, if, this, if you're building this team that's what you want to do you almost always want to use your a2 targeting the dead mischief head because that's where you're going to get the most amount of damage now if we have a look at madman same build, 6,250% crit damage. That would be harder because his base attack is about 300 lower. Um, we'll put him in 40% ignore defense. His multiplier here is half. It's only three times. So the first hit of his multiplier is going to be weaker, but he does gain 5% on books, which means that he's gaining 10% more on his secondary hit. Same masteries that we're going to apply here. We're going to apply weaken, same effects. So we can see we're going to be hitting for 437,960 instead of the... 600,000 so it's about 200,000 less raw damage which means that's going to translate into only a 387 percent combined damage because we're only taking 30 percent of this first hit not 60 percent and obviously if you're hitting no decapitation it doesn't really work right you need to be hitting decapitated heads at least the first one and ideally the second one that is where you're going to see the most amount of damage success is when you're hitting decapitated heads because you're getting 400 percent multiplication on that second aoe not just zero so you're going to do about two million i would suggest that madman will struggle on nightmare purely because you're having to beat higher hp heads you can't kill them as regularly and also he's squishier and also he just doesn't have as much raw damage but you could do it if you've got some insane gear maybe you've got a six star that you can get some bonus stats on if you've awakened him but definitely will struggle a lot more on nightmare normal though should be absolutely fine for you to pump some damage so that is how it works essentially the tldr is you're remultiplying 
raw damage that is not based off a multiplier but rather the damage of the first hit so the second hit is getting twice the amount of multiplication effects in my personal opinion from a game balance and a game dev perspective i've long argued that these excessive things should be fixed damage so you do 60 percent, and that 60 percent cannot be modified it cannot be remultiplied because you're able to abuse this quite hard in certain scenarios it was it's been a problem in arena for many years with Trunda. It's not like this has all of a sudden become a big thing. The Clash has put a spotlight on it, but this has been a bit of an issue with Trunda for quite a while. The only other question I think I need to answer really is when should you use Trunda and when should you use Madman? Now, Trunda is always going to be better, but it's not on an A1, and that is an important factor. If you don't have Yumikos, you don't have Kaimas, then Trunda's efficiency is going to go down. My account doesn't have either of those champions. So realistically, trying to enable Trunda, you're hoping for all the stars to align with the A2 at the right time with the right head being killed and the right decapitate. It's very, very difficult to enable. That is when I would consider going towards the Madman because what you can do is build a team that substitutes the reset champions for an ally attack champion so if i was building a team around madman i only have the one at the moment i would go to something like hard and i would say okay we're going to build madman in here he can go into this team here we would probably build someone with ally attacks right we want at least two ally attacks so i would definitely take a long beard and a farrakin you could take a lot try to bring people that can ensure that all allies attack so you get the maximum amount of opportunities to ensure that he always is the one that's chosen I think Cardiel could be the good choice as well if you have him. Lady Makage also. I, I think that's what Scratch tested, Cardiel and Lady Makage. Then you also need someone who can kind of give you the, the debuffs you require, right? The decreased defense and weaken. You need these up consistently. So you could pick a, a Lydia or a Venus. Both would be very good. Or you can go um, for a Cecilia. Basically, you want someone who can apply all of them. Suzerain Catone would be a great option as well because you get decreased speed at the same time. So you can go like Lydia would be great. That sets up the framework. Then you also need probably an increase attack champion. That would be essential because his damage is based off attack. So you need someone with increased attack here. That could be a Duchess. It could be a Mithrala. Probably Mithrala is really good because you get Hex. Hex is also very important because the first hit, the second hits, all of them are going to spread more bonus damage. So if you're dealing 437,000 on the first hit, then 43,000 is going to be spread across all the three other heads. And again, Hex is not fixed damage so that it can multiply off the decapitation. So if you are, if you've hexed a, de a decapitated head, you attack one head for 400,000, 40,000 is going to attack all the other heads for the hex debuff. And then it's going to get multiplied by, by essentially three because it's a 200% multiplier. So actually it's going to do 81, 20,000 to all those other heads. And when you've got three other dead heads, that's 243, 60,000. So you've basically almost doubled your initial hit, single target with Hex. So Hex is really important as well. And then we kind of probably just need some turn meter control. We don't really have any decreased speeds. So I would be looking here to go, okay, I just want to make sure that the head stay dead as long as possible. So I would bring a turn meter control. You could bring a counter if you want for the provoke. You would probably need to make sure that you can either kill the provoke head really quickly or you bring something else. I would recommend someone like Stratagos Islin very good. You could bring someone like Morrigan, wouldn't have a provoke though. You could bring a Necmothar in provoke set and just cycle background. You could bring a second Madman if you want, but it's actually quite hard to fit them both in, but that could work as well. So that's what you need as an archetype for Madman. You would want to replace the reset champions, which would normally be Yumiko and Kaima with ally attackers, and then give you some basic frameworks like decrease defense, weaken, increase attack, hex, and the decrease speed. Get those in your team that's when I would use Madman. If you have the Yumikos and you have the, the Kaimas, then you would just run double Trunda, Yumiko, Kaima, and just kill everything. The heads won't stay alive long enough. That is the end of the video there. I just wanted to do not a video necessarily showcasing a team, not a video that is actually asking for nerf. I'm not trying to call for, you know, let's nerf this straight away. I do think personally from a, a developer's perspective, if I put my, my, my dev hat on, it's not really in the design intention that the secondary ability should get double of everything. So it maybe should be fixed, but that is what is happening. That is why the damage is producing to such high numbers is you're getting double the decapitation bonus, double your crit damage bonus, double your book bonus, double your mastery bonus, because the first hit has already received the multipliers and therefore you're taking 60% of a multiplied damage output and then multiplying it again. 
And it's those combinations of remultiplication that really scales the damage to such an extreme extent. It's also worth mentioning there are other heroes and other champions that do this effect as well, but a lot of them are based on killing an enemy. The most obvious one, the recent one, would be Sun Wukong. He has a similar effect here. The only difference is they've made it so that the critical damage cannot be added to the surplus damage, but every other multiplication effect can be. So his 30% from his books will go into that secondary effect. The masteries will go into that secondary effect. Weaken will go into that secondary effect. When Wukong came out, I had a lot of people asking me the question, why is the surplus damage, why is the secondary hit hitting so much harder? It doesn't make any sense. It is this remultiplication effect. Now it's different here because this damage number is based on how much excess damage you dealt to a target. So if a target is on one HP and you hit for a thousand, then you've got 999 to put into that second hit. Whereas if a target is on 999 HP and you hit for a thousand, you're only multiplying the final damage by one, far less efficient. So that is the difference here. You can't actually get a fixed surplus amount. It's going to be, it's going to scale based on how dead the target is you already attacked. Another person that does this is Baron. He's the other famous one that kind of does this A1 effect where he can kill all other enemies with surplus used very popularly in doom tower and very good in arena but again you have to kill an enemy and remember with decapitation you don't kill a head you decapitate it it's not considered a kill event in order for this to work with other heroes it has to be for hydra damage that is percentage based off the first hit not a second hit so i, I someone asked me today about uh Krokma. he's a new hero he has an a1 attacks one enemy attacks all enemies one time if the first attack is critical this won't work the same way because you're still actually only hitting the same value of first hit. So you would essentially go, if you were hitting 200,000, you would probably hit 200,000 to all other enemies if it's the same multiplier. Because essentially, you're not remultiplying the first hit, you're creating a second unique set of damage. If this said attacks one enemy, attacks all other enemies with 50% of the damage of the first attack, then it will work like Trunder because you're remultiplying an already multiplied damage ability. So that's what you need to look out for to understand how these, how you can abuse these effects. It has to be based off the first damage so that you can remultiply it and then just make sure it, it actually doesn't say things like this damage is fixed. It, I don't think the game actually tells you that. I think you have to data mine it to know. But let me know guys in the comments below, does that clarify things for you? Do you think Trunder needs a nerf or are you happy with it? Do you think Yumiko needs a nerf? What is your experiences with Hydro Clash now that Cadaver is out? I just wanted to give you the technical or the, the sort of math lesson so you understand exactly how it's working so you can actually build it with more understanding yourself. A lot of people might be building this team not knowing what they're doing. I wanted to help you out with it. If you like this video, as always, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of these kind of deep dive videos, if you like this type of content, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification. All my videos will then come straight into your feed and I'll catch you guys in the next video.